Good morning, my sisters and brothers. It's once again that we take this opportunity to come out and to greet God's people. We come out this morning to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Everyone that serves him should be able to lift up his name and give him the honor, the glory, and the praise that he so richly deserves. Because we are the sheep of his pasture. He is our keeper. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Father God, in the name of your son Jesus, we come this morning with bowed heads and humble hearts. Father, we come and give you thanks. Father, give me thanks for yet another day. Father, thank you for giving us the opportunity for allowing your grace and your mercy to keep us in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. My sisters and my brothers, this morning, uh, we come and want to talk to you just for a little while this morning about some of the things of old, some of the things that we have forgotten, some of the things that we have moved on from. The Word of God says that we should remember and we should teach our children to all generation. Uh, we're gonna be in the book of Exodus for one or two verses, and then we're gonna move on to the book of Matthew chapter 11 for maybe one or two verses. The word of God in Exodus chapter two, he says, I want you to remember where I brought you from, I brought you up, out of Egypt, I brought you out of the house of bondage. Well, there's somebody this morning right now that's in bondage. Maybe not physical bondage, but their mind is ensnared. Uh, they may have pain on their body. Uh, they may have situations and circumstances that they just don't understand this morning. But I'm here to tell you this morning that you can find all your answers in the Word of God. Man can give you his view of things, but God can tell you from the depths of his heart to the city of your soul how to render every situation and circumstance that you may find yourself in this morning. Uh, the enemy has placed uh, you in bondage in your health. Pray to God. Pray to God for your deliverance. Pray to God that he may show mercy. Pray to God that he may heal. And even if he doesn't heal you on this side, remember, he has a healing for you on the other side. A place of rest. A place where there will be no more pain. There will be no more sorrow. So my sisters and my brothers, we find our place sometimes, ourselves sometimes, backed up against uh, circumstances, situations, mountains, valleys, and hills. But when we cry out to the God who has saved us, when we cry out to him once again, the same God who we have put away, the same God who we have allowed something else to take first place in our lives, when we cry out to him, he hears us. He hears us because he is our heavenly father. And he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You may leave me, but I will never leave you. And all, all it takes is for you to turn back to him. Turn back to him in remembrance. Remember where I brought you from. Remember how I saved humanity. Just remember. Remember when you were down and out, when you had no recourse, when you had no one else to turn to, when you turned to me, my peace was upon you. That's the greatest thing in the world, to have the peace of God upon you. Because no matter what the world will bring, and it will bring heartaches, it will bring pain, it may even bring suffering, but the word of God can give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, I'm sure that, uh, that uh, some of us have been trapped in situations, trapped in circumstances, trapped in jobs, that uh, we deem that, you know, I just can't do another day here. 
but let God be your peace even in that job. And while you're there in the one that you have, pray to him. Just don't just don't sit there and, and moan, groan, and complain, but pray to him that he would either ease the heart of that individual or move you to a better place because he has a place for each and every one of us. When his children moaned for over 400 years being in bondage, he said, I heard you cry. And I, I came down to move you to a better place. I came to move you to a land of milk and honey. And that's a reference to a land of plenty. And moved them to land, to houses they didn't build, wells that they didn't dig. And those are the things that, that God can do for you and he says so in his word. And if his word says it, whether you believe it or not, it shall come to pass. Because that is what God says. My sisters and my brothers, while we're on this journey, uh, going back to God, let us also remember, let us always remember the peace that he has given our foreparents in their coming along. Uh, our foreparents, uh, they didn't have the, the conveniences that we have. They didn't have a lot of things that are so readily at hand for you and I. But still yet, God was able to use them in the capacity that they were in. They were, he was able to use them to bring us to where we're at right now. So all the teaching and preaching that mom and daddy did, that you and I can call back into remembrance right now, we should be able to call back the words of God in his remembrance. We should write them upon the tables of our heart so that way when we don't have the 66 books, we can have enough in us to not only sustain us, but to move another individual along on this continuing forward path back to God. A friend of mine in his church, he has a he has a banner that says, into worship, out to serve. And that's what we are supposed to do. We're supposed to be servants of God. And how do we do that? By continually putting his word forward, letting individuals who allow us to come into their lives, to let them know that there is a better way, that there is someone that can remove those burdens from you. That there's someone that's able to make your life just a little bit better. That there's someone, when there's no peace, can bring peace. When there's no joy, can bring joy. When you're hurt, he can heal. When you're damaged, he can repair. Because that's what he says in his word, the word of God. So my sisters and my brothers, as we go along, on this continuous forward journey. Remember and forget not. Remember and forget not all the ways that the Lord has led us, all the ways that he has led us, the days of our lives, the days of our foreparents' lives. We have a mother uh, in our church. She's coming up on a 100th year anniversary. So I look at that as a pure blessing from God. So that tells me that way back then, she has done the work that he had designed for her to do. Because uh, you don't get to be 100 by luck. You get to, get to be 100 by faith in God, belief in God, believing in what he says will and do come to pass. We have had some storms in our lives these past few days. We have had some ups and we have had some downs. We have had some lefts and we have also had some rights. But you know what? God is still there. He is still God. He is God all by himself. And that's the word from the Almighty. And I'm going to leave you with this. In the book of Matthew, chapter 11, right around verse 28, uh, Jesus tells, tells us all to come to him. Come to me, all that labor 
and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, my sisters and my brothers, that is a word from the Son of the living God. Come. That means you. That means you. And that means you. He didn't say come those that have. He didn't say come those who are on the upper echelon. He said come. Whomsoever come, just come and I will give you rest. Because yes, some of our burdens are heavy. They're heavy upon our hearts. They are physically heavy upon our bodies. But he says, you just come and I will give you rest. God's word for God's people. I'm done, but thus says the Lord. May he have, may he continue to bless and keep you is my prayer.